Hi, this is your host Sublim Bhartiya and welcome to a brand new episode of T3M or topic of this month and the topic of this month is security and today we have with us once again Glenn Russell, Principal Engineer at Carrick Group. Glenn, it's great to have you back on the show. Happy to be back, thank you. Let's talk about the state of security. Security, uh, you know, we used to live in the legacy traditional IT world but when we moved to the multi-cloud cloud native cloud sending world, uh, the definition of security has kind of also changed. It's no longer kind of afterthought. It's kind of, and then we are seeing a lot of movement like shift left and all those things. So I want to hear from you how you have seen this evolution and what is the state of security in the multi-cloud cloud centric world? Things really haven't changed uh, on, in one respect in that I think the key parts of a good security program um, are the same as they've always been. It's who has access to what, it's uh, managing logs and events, it's um, all of the things which have been a part and parcel of, of legacy security programs for years. The real issue is that with the move to, to public cloud um, is really the kind of the curse of choice and the complexity that comes with that because whereas you know, um, uh, developers and, and, and infrastructure architects you know, we're, we're pretty much constrained by hardware in bygone days. Now they have a somewhat limitless, um, you know, resources in the form of AWS, GCP, et cetera. Uh, but with that comes with the complexity of managing that estate. Um, and while those fundamentals kind of fundamentally have, have changed the same, the complexity has unfortunately greatly uh, increased. Um, and this has presented many challenges, not least, not least of all to security vendors themselves, and we can talk a bit about how that landscape's improving. Um, but certainly what Carrick sees um, you know, day to day at customers um, is that those enterprise uh, workloads, the, those legacy applications are still very much centerpiece in, in uh, a company's um, you know, uh, uh, dependent services and critical services. The real trick, so to speak, is how to migrate those into multi-cloud and public cloud while maintaining resilience and business continuity. And when you look at these modern you know, users, is security still an afterthought for them or because of this embrace of cloud, a lot of practices like shift left is there, DevOps, DevSecOps, uh, the whole zero trust movement. Do you think that you know, they are prioritizing security where they're like the, the moment they develop a right application, the security become you know, part of that process from the very beginning? I think the happy news is that increasingly what, what we see with our customers is that teams are increasingly focused on security and they're increasingly focused on shifting it left. But let's be clear, that is not becoming any easier for reasons I talked about earlier. That is becoming only more complex. Um, so what we see, for example, are uh, teams who move to public cloud and really they're kind of forced into doing more of a lift and shift. And so really they do, they also bring over all their technical debt too, and that includes security technical debt. Um, so while I think that security vendors, for example, on the public clouds themselves are getting better at providing tools for those teams, there's still a very, quite a significant shortfall in how you get from that data center based monolith to something which is more cloud native. It is simply not a binary thing. That is why it's a journey and, and, not, a, uh, and not a destination, so to speak. Um, I mean, so, you know, vendors like Wiz, for example, are, are, um, are noted for the fact that they execute well. It's not even a technology question, it's they execute well. And I think that's, that's the most important thing that, that we see when we're dealing with these large, uh, large enterprises migrating to public cloud. Uh, that's a perfect segue to my next question, because you said, you know, it's, it's more or less like, you know, uh... Uh, part of the process, you know, it's not a technology problem. It's not a, you know, tools problem. It's kind of culture problem. Uh, and talking about culture, we uh, have been talking a lot about platform engineering these days. How do you see, you know, the, 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 the evolution of practices like platform engineering is also kind of helping embrace uh, security practices into uh, the, the, the platform teams, their processes. So once again, uh, as you also talked, some of the hurdles are, you know, exercising, practicing. So how is platform engineering helping it, if it is helping with security at all? Well, I think it's very much uh, helping uh, security. And from the point of view that uh, the developers need to build applications, the applications are what, that's what makes your business successful. That is your business. I mean, 
I think many companies these days, regardless of whether they're a blue chip company or a travel company or an airline, would say that they are, among other things, a technology company. And the technology company is dead in the water unless they can actually deploy their applications quickly and secondly, and as importantly, securely. Um, one, one thing I'll refer to is um, I was reflecting on a, on a customer, um, well, not a customer, a colleague at a, a bank a few years ago. And this was a bank that I looked at and said, this is the model for how to do security in public cloud. Um, and unfortunately, about two months uh, hence, um, I saw the news about how uh, they suffered a, a critical data breach down to the simplest of things, a misconfiguration in public cloud. And really that, uh, that underlined for me the need to put security at the start of the application lifecycle and not the end. Because by the time you've deployed that vulnerability, the cost and time to remediate it is probably 10 times, 100 times longer than it would have been. And I think platform engineering brings focus where it belongs at the start of that journey and makes it an iterative concern up there with product functionality, uh, resilience, you know, fi you know, features, et cetera. Excellent. And that brings us to another interesting point, as you're saying about, you know, the today's company, I, I think in modern world, every company has to have some, you know, you have to be a tech company. You cannot survive without having a dedicated teams uh, to, to take care of your tech. And of course, cloud is a big part of that. And a lot of flaws that we are seeing, uh, gone are the days where flaws are about zero day vulnerability in some you know, proprietary code base. Most of the things that we are seeing are either social engineering, uh, I don't want to give a name of a company, or as you mentioned, misconfiguration, or there we are all using open source technologies. Uh, the bug, the thing is the bug was fixed, the patch was already out there, but once again, it did not get to the process, it was never applied. And also, we are also seeing a totally, you know, geopolitical situation with a lot of, you know, state-sponsored attacks are happening, uh, where once again, socially, all these things are happening. So that brings us to the point of the, the cultural changes. So cultural change is not just about implementing these uh, technologies, but also how to also make sure, uh, I mean, security, as you also said, is a process, not a product. You know, it will always be there. Bad guys have to be right only once. We have to be right all the time. So talk a bit about the cultural changes that are happening, which go beyond just utilizing the tools that you are seeing with your customers. I think one of the biggest things is the realization, I think at last, that uh, among the security practitioners at large companies, that they can't do it all themselves. So I'm sure many of our viewers are, are, uh, know about, for example, their application security team. And their application security team, modern day, is fighting a losing battle and has been for years. Because you know, one of the things you talked about, which was very uh, prescient, I think, was um, you, know, you, you have an attack which is, might be a social engineering attack. It might also be uh, a known vulnerability that was breached. More often than not, it's a combination of those things. It's a social engineer attack, uh, and then a, an attacker is traversed using a well-known vulnerability. There's no point solution on the planet that is going to solve that problem. And that's why uh, increasingly we're seeing uh, enterprises look to effectively decentralize the job of security and make it everyone's, uh, make it everyone's not, I don't want to say a problem, but everyone's concern. Um, and we're seeing that, especially in AppSec, we're seeing it with uh, uh, platform engineering. We've been seeing with Dev DevOps and, and SRE for a long time in, in the in the you know in the in the form of, of DevSecOps. Um, and this can only be a positive thing. And how that what that looks like is you know uh, you know uh, uh, the, the security team maintaining policy, maintaining governance, but letting the teams themselves decide how they're going to satisfy a particular policy or control. And that's immensely powerful because remember. Not most of us don't get to work in greenfield projects. We have projects and, and applications that have been running for 20 years. The latest and greatest vulnerability scanners maybe don't even read the source code. And so we have to give the teams the ability and the responsibility and the trust to do the right thing. Um, and thankfully, whereas the idea of um, using trust as a security control is maybe a, 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 antithetical to a lot of the viewers, uh, we see that it has uh, very positive results in, in reducing vulnerability rates, and making better code, and increasing deployment times. Are there any new kind of threats uh, that you are seeing? We talk about, you know, API-driven world, zombie APIs. Where there are a lot of folks, you know, when they move to cloud, they start a lot of things. They never stop them. So 
So what are the new uh, either threats or new kind of uh, attack surfaces that you are seeing, which can be vulnerable even in this cloud and cloud native world? In modern day, it's really hard to, to not have a conversation that has has uh, has mentioned ChatGPT at least once. Let me let me tell you what I think about ChatGPT. Regardless of the technology itself, the reality is that here's a new technology which has users excited. When you generate ex when you generate excitement in the technology, there's a corresponding um, you know, opportunity on the attacker side to harness that to capture more and more um, users and um, and to encourage other kinds of attacks with the same technology in a spec in, in effect, but which um, uh, is just using a new buzz, a new hype. And again, I'm not saying ChatGPT is hype uh, at all. What I'm saying is, you dangle that kind of new technology in front of people, and you have that carrot to compromise a set of credentials, implant malware, you know, so um, whereas, you, you know, things like, um, I'm sure you've heard about prompt injection, you know, where someone puts a, an instruction to ChatGPT on their LinkedIn profile, ChatGPT reads it and reveals some secret information. Really, you're just talking about the same theme of things that's happened before, that new technology been used in, in unintended ways to actually, um, uh, you know, uh, harvest credentials. I would say this, though, I think that uh, a very real threat or, you know, with respect to AI is, is the prevalence of synthetic identity. You know, whereas before we could make a good judgment call as to whether that LinkedIn request was actually a genuine one, now it's becoming harder and harder through the gener generation of synthetic human, synthetic voice um, to actually identify, well, who's real and who's not. But Let's ignore the tech for one second. We're fundamentally talking about the same thing. Been socially engineered to make a connection with somebody who has malicious intent. So in that way, things are the same as they've always been, but the attack factors and the tools are slightly different. Let's talk a bit about, you know, uh, uh, of course, the problem is there, challenges there, as we discussed, security is always a process. Talk a bit about how are you folks, by you folks, I mean, Carry Group, you are helping customers to improve their security. Indeed. and. Back to some of the discussion we've already had. That starts at the beginning of the the journey, whether it's a uh, you know a migrating a single app, uh, multiple apps, or uh, an entire company over to to, to public cloud. Um, it starts with the fundamentals, and you know it's not a shiny and exciting answer. But the things which applied you know last year apply this year. It's it's getting a getting a customer to understand about the principles of least privilege. The, the principle of a breach first mentality, which says that, you know, assume you've been breached and that you're trying to limit the damage, the so-called blast radius of an attack. Um, and then once you've established those um, core kind of tenets of how people should think about their technology and their apps, showing them how to actually implement that in code and automation um, and, um, and all those things, which will ultimately result in the business value. And that is getting your applications to cloud securely so you can do your job faster and beat your competitors to having a new feature. Um, and that's a, a relatively simple remit. But again, we're in complex environments. We rarely ever see a greenfield project um, and no two customers are the same. So I think that where Carrot really fills that gap and, and where the gap needs to be filled, by the way, is that bridge between the tech uh, the security vendors and what what's actually happening on a day to day basis, and you know, Carrick fills that gap. As we all know, as much as we love everybody to be on the cloud, the thing is that there are companies who are in different phases of their journey. A lot of folks are still in the early stage where they are embarking on their you know cloud journey from the data center to public cloud. As they embark on this journey, what advice do you have for them so that they can ensure that they have all the processes in place, they have right practices in place, and of course, the tools. So share your advice for them. I think the first thing uh, comes down to that age-old uh, question of communication. And it's ensuring that uh, at the very start of the journey, that everybody, every stakeholder um, is in the room and that everybody understands what uh, what the journey is, what what the end goal is, and how, how the teams are going to get there. And from a security point of view, that means including the existing uh, network security teams, the, the governance, uh, GRC teams, the AppSec teams, um, and understanding what it is they're actually going to do. Because it is, it is a long journey. The customers that we deal with, for example, it's a two, three, four year journey. And that is not going to happen with a set of security practitioners sitting in a silo 
uh, by themselves dictating security policy to the rest of the company because of the technical challenges uh, that they'll encounter and as importantly um, the change in uh, security controls or the design of security controls to compensate for those complexities is something that's going to be iterative it's a journey which is not going to be a straight line it's probably going to resemble more of a um, a zigzag and maybe a bit of back and forward um, but getting those people in the same room up front understanding what your uh, what your security goals are uh, at a fine grained level and having those applied to um, or, or excuse me uh, designing the, understanding the controls that are going to be in place understanding for example which controls are going to remain in the data center as part of that journey when you switch over what does a cutover look like down with milestones and dates as I never thought I'd hear myself say it, but get a project manager um, or a program manager in place to help guide all this. Um, it really comes down to communication. You know, Google, AWS, etc., cetera, um, will, will give you the tech and tell you how to use it, but unless you get your people together and actually get them on the same page, it's, it, it's never going to work. It's never going to succeed. Glenn, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about security also. Uh, great advice there. And as usual, I would love to check with you again soon. Thank you. Thanks very much, Swatman. Thank you.